So, Charles, when did you first decide to become a naturalist? Well, I don't know I ever decided. I had a long-standing interest in it. By the time I was about 15, I collected about 967 types of beetle. Wow, that's really impressive. What was your favourite type of beetle? Well, there's a particular beetle near me in Gloucester that's a very unusual cow base. I was very proud of that, as it took me three weeks of observation to catch it. Right. Anyway, we are here to interview you. How was the beagle? That was quite a challenge. We were gone for a few years and sometimes I was very, very seasick. The food wasn't good and we had to eat what we could find. But in terms of animal life, it was fantastic. Not to mention tasty. And uh, how was John Fitzroy? He was um, a bit odd. And towards the end of the voyage, he was slightly more, because we sort of got on OK. Did you catch any specimens? I came back with jars and jars of dried birds, specimens and animal pelts. Not to mention my drawings of animals. Wow! Where did you keep them all? They were all packed up with me on the beagle. I gathered them together and took them home to my house. Excellent. So how was school? School? Didn't really get on with school. I had a few friends, but I didn't really enjoy it. I was going when off to university to train to be a doctor. That wasn't really my cup of tea. And I got thrown out because I didn't work hard enough. And then, because my family wanted me to do something with my life, they arranged for me to become a priest. Excellent. I hear you've written a book. The Origin of Species. Well, yes, it took me some 20 years before thinking the ideas and publishing it. But I had to do a lot of thinking first. I used to go on a walk. I got my gardeners to make a path around my gardens. It, made, it was made of sand so it didn't get muddy and I could walk and think and think and walk for hours and hours. I was really worried if, I would, if it would be published and then be copyright. Someone else, Mr. Wallace, said they had very similar ideas, so I had to go to print. So, what happened after you published? Oh, well, as I previously worried, everyone went a bit mad, saying I had gone against God, and it was an affront to God. Not only had I suggested that the earth was older than it was, but, I mean, the man was descended from apes. I went to present a lecture in London, and this chap stood up and said, Tell me, sir, is it on your mother's side or your father's side that you are descended from a chimp? Ha <laughs> I see. And poor old Fitzroy, Fitzroy got a heck of, in a heck of a, heck of a stay, and he found I thought these ungodly thoughts whilst on the beagle. He got so cross about it, he shot himself after all. Sounds like naturalism is more dangerous than you might expect. It is if you're going to say something controversial. I hear you've discovered a theory about tortoises. Oh, indeed. When I was in the Galapagos, I noticed that tortoises, giant tortoises they are there, were, di were different on different islands. I even met a local who said he could tell which island the tortoise came from just from the taste of the meat. He said it tasted like chicken. Wow! Finally! What do you feel about appearing on a banknote? Well, you know, it's a great honour, something I didn't expect. I mean, I'm handsome, I'm one of the greatest naturalists ever, live ever lived, and I'm handsome. But I'm not sure I look like that, but it's a great honour, a great, great honour. <laughs>